Welcome to the Life United Podcast. We are all about helping you know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We know that today's message is going to be a blessing to you. Hello, everyone. So good to be with you uh, tonight to share the Word of God with you on this Wednesday night. And we are we are moving toward Easter. This Sunday is Easter. It's Resurrection Sunday. It's when we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. We know He was raised from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and we celebrate that. And uh, so I want to share something with you. We've been talking about for the last number of weeks now about hope or expectations. And uh, so I want to talk to you for a little bit today about resurrection expectations. Because a lot of times we put everything in regard to the resurrection uh, and in regard to our resurrection into the future. And we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and we celebrate the fact that, that He was raised from the dead so that we could live, we could have forgiveness of sins because of what He bore on the cross for us. And, and that's right. And, but you, you need to understand that the resurrection is applicable for your life, my life today. And we can expect things uh, from the resurrection now, not just when we get to the rapture, you know, when the dead in Christ rise and we rise together with them. There is a, another value that I want to show you today from the Word of God. But all our expectations as, are, as Christians are tied to the resurrection. And so what are you expecting out of the resurrection? Now, I know most people are going to say, well, I'm expecting to one day to be raised like Jesus. And that's true and that's real. But, but I want to tell you, there's more to it. And I want to show you today from the Word of God some things that can help you. Uh, Martha came to Jesus. Jesus had come to Lazarus, he heard he died, he was in the tomb, and, and Martha came to meet Jesus, and, and Martha said this. It says, as soon as, and, and this is in John chapter 11, verse 20, it says, Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to the Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, now listen to this, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Now, now notice where Martha is with this, okay? Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Now we know because we've read this story about Lazarus that Jesus raised him from the dead. But that's not what Martha was thinking. Listen to what it says. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now see, listen, that's really kind of how we look at the resurrection today. I know that when we're raised up, that resurrection of the just, when we're raised up, then, then we're going to receive everything that God has for us. But I want to tell you something. There's more than that in this story, and there's more than that to the resurrection than just what Jesus did for our future. Jesus said to her in verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die and he asked her, do you believe this? And Martha said to him, yes, Lord, I believe you're the Christ, the Son of God who has come into the world. So now listen to this a minute, okay? Martha had an expectation about the resurrection. And that expectation was for her brother to be raised from the dead at the end. And yeah, Jesus, I know. Well, Jesus said something pretty strong here. He said, uh, I am the resurrection. That changes everything. 
It didn't say, Jesus didn't say, I'm going to raise people from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection. And that was before he even died. That's before he was raised from the dead. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. And so Martha had limited Jesus and the resurrection to one event. And, and that one event was it. And, and if, you're not, if, if you're not in that one event, then you're not going to be involved. For example, Lazarus, if it had just been that one event that she thought about, Lazarus, her brother, would never have been raised from the dead. But the fact is, Jesus called him forth from that tomb, and Lazarus was raised from the dead. Now, you say, well, Pastor, what are you getting at? Listen to this. And Mary did the same thing in, in, in John chapter 11, verse 32. Mary came and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Well, when you're the resurrection, it doesn't matter whether you die or whether you're sick, the resurrection can take care of it. But the thing that we need to understand out of this is, and the picture that we need to get out of this is, Mary and Martha, primarily Martha, had their focus on a future event and that that resurrection was for another time, yet that power of the resurrection, now listen to me, was available for her brother right at that moment when Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. So she said, Pastor, what are you saying? Here's what I'm saying. Listen, and I'm going to get into this at the end of the, end of the message here, but you, you've got to hear this. Listen. Jesus released the resurrection into everyday life. And I'm going to show you this from the Word. I think it's going to help you. <clears throat> but you, you've got to understand that, that when Jesus was raised from the dead, that resurrection power, according to Ephesians um, chapter 3 and verse 10, that it flows out. It, it's an outflowing. It's a power that's now generating in our lives today by the Holy Spirit. So you need to understand your expectation for what God can do regarding the resurrection should be more. It should be daily. It should be something God can do for me now, not something that is in the future. Now, listen, I'm not talking about dying and being raised from the dead today. What I'm talking about is the power that generated the resurrection is available today. And it's available for you. So we're going to talk about that, but, but I, I want you, to, and I want to build this expectation for you, but you've got to hear what the Word of God says about this. And if, you, if you'll understand this, it will really help you expect God to do something great in your life. And let me, let me talk to you about this for a minute, and we're going, we'll talk about this and we'll come back to, to the resurrection power. But listen. If you're not expecting God to do something now, you're missing out on what God wants to do. Uh, over in John chapter 20, in, in verse, beginning in verse 3, it says, Peter went out and the other disciple, and they were going to the tomb. Now listen to this. So they both ran together. The other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. He, stooping down and looked in, saw the linen cloth lying there, and he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloth lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw it. And believed. Now listen to this. This is important. For as yet they did not know the Scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Now stop and think about this a minute. Most people think this was John, so we'll just say it was. Peter and John, they go to the tomb. The tomb is empty. And, they, and, they, and the, everything was in order, but... Jesus was not there, but they didn't get it. And listen to what it says in verse 9 again. They did not know the Scripture 
that he must rise again from the dead. They weren't expecting it. Even though the Word of God communicated it, they weren't expecting it. They weren't expecting this to happen. The reason they weren't is because their expectation was not based on what the Scripture says about the word, what the Word of God said or what Jesus Himself said. Listen to Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Talking about Jesus, it says, And He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, now listen to this, and after three days rise again. He spoke this word openly. Now listen to this. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and rebuked him. Isn't that amazing? He took him aside and rebuked him. Why? Peter was acting religiously. He didn't see Jesus being raised from the dead. He, he didn't see that. He didn't want that. And Jesus says, tells us why. He said, because you're, listen to this, he said, you're mindful of, not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. He was mindful of the things of men. In other words, natural things had totally clouded over what Jesus had just told him about the resurrection. And I want to tell you today, listen to me. God's power is available today. God wants to work in our lives today in resurrection power. But if you're not careful, your natural mind will get clouded over and, and you will not understand and realize that, hey, the Scripture is talking about today. God can do something today. Over in Mark chapter 9, remember we just read that out of Mark chapter 8. So again in Mark chapter 9, listen to this. In verse 31, it says, Jesus taught His disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill Him. And he, now listen to this, after he is killed, he will rise on the third day. On the third day, he will rise. Now, I love the next verse, verse 32. They did not understand this saying and were afraid to ask. I guess so. After Jesus rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you're mindful of the things of men and not of the things of God. I guess they were afraid to say something. But listen, listen to this. Listen to what it says. Jesus right here taught twice very clearly, I'm going to die, I'm going to be raised again. But, but just so you get this, listen to this. Mark chapter 10, verse 12, listen to what, I'm sorry, verse 32, listen to what Jesus said. Now they were going down the road, coming to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed. As they followed, they were afraid. Then he took the twelve aside and began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Now listen to what Jesus said. We're going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priest and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock and scourge him, spit on him, kill him, and the third day he will rise again. Jesus taught it over and over again to his disciples, but yet, listen, they were not expecting the word, y'all still with me? The word to work. They were not expecting that word to come to pass. And we know they weren't because of how they reacted after the resurrection, before Jesus revealed himself. We, we understand. They didn't get it. They didn't understand. Uh, it, I like what it says. They didn't know. They didn't understand. They didn't com uh, completely realize what was going to happen, even though Jesus told them over and over and over and over. 
I, I believe that we're that way sometimes about the Word of God. We can hear the Word of God over and over and over, but our expectation that God will do that or wants to do that doesn't seem to be there. It's clouded, and I believe it's clouded because we mind natural things like Peter did more than things of God. It was clear. Jesus was clear, very clear. On that third day, I am going to be raised up. But they struggled with it. They couldn't understand it. They didn't realize it. Even though it was right there in front of them, they didn't realize it. Now listen, you think, well, I would never do that. Well, listen, you're going to come to church Easter Sunday morning. You're going to celebrate that resurrection. But in the Word of God... It talks about all that Jesus did for us and all that he wants to do for us. And we just kind of let that go right over the top of our head and say, yeah, when Jesus comes back, wait a minute, what about what he wants to do right now? So you can lose sight of that. You can get so tied up with the things of the world. And, and as Peter did, you miss out. <clears throat> you don't realize, you know what? God really wants to do something for me today. I'm going to show you this from the Word, so just hang with me. God wants to do something for me today. The Word of God tells me this, and, and, and the resurrection guarantees it. God wants to work. Then there's the other account. And this is the account of John, uh, of Thomas over in John chapter 20. Uh, and, in verse 24. Now Thomas... One of the twelve was not with them when they saw Jesus after the resurrection. He, he wasn't with them. And the other disciples said, we've seen the Lord. And he said to them, unless I see his hands, the prince of the nails, and put my hand on his side, I will not believe. And if I can't put my finger in the prince, put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas is an example of how far away you can get from the real resurrection and what God could do. And, and really, I believe a lot of it was because of the brutality of the cross. It blinded his faith. You know, Thomas saw the brutality of what, it, what happened to Jesus. And, and I, I mean, in my own mind, I think G, Peter, I'm, I'm sorry, that, uh, that Thomas looked at him and he said, there's no way he can come back from this. There's no way. These circumstances are way too overwhelming. I know Jesus told us three different times, but, but I, I can see what happened to him. He was nailed to the cross. I saw that spear thrust in his side. I, I just, it, the circumstances are just too overwhelming. <clears throat> really, I think a lot of people today in life get that way. They see the circumstances of life. They seem to be overwhelming, and they forget, wait a minute, there was a resurrection. Uh, that resurrection produced power. Uh, I, I believe God can do something even in the midst of how bad it looks. Of course, we know what happened here, um, that Jesus appeared to him and said, Thomas, put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. And, and Thomas, don't doubt, just believe, because blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Now listen, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Do you know that's you and me today? We're believers. We haven't seen Jesus. We believe His Word. We believe the Holy Spirit is revealed to us. We haven't seen Him personally. We're blessed. Jesus said we're blessed because of that. And so Jesus ministered to, to Thomas and rebuked him for his unbelief. Now listen to me. And then he became a great missionary for Jesus. In fact, I was telling the staff today that he, he actually went into uh, parts of the Ukraine and preached the gospel. He went all over Europe preaching the gospel <clears throat> before his death. So Thomas was a believer. But listen to me. These two things can hinder you. Well, actually three things can hinder you 
from really allowing the, the power of the resurrection to work in your life. First of all, if you think it's just for the future, like Mary and Martha, if, if it's just the future, well, I believe the resurrection of the just. Je, he's going to be raised then. And Jesus just said, uh, Martha, I am the resurrection. So he was saying, I, I will make this work for you today. I, I want you to understand and realize that today I'm releasing the resurrection into everyday life. That's the key. But then you've got to understand that you've got to know and, and believe and have confidence in the Word of God. The Scripture said that they couldn't believe the Scripture. Then they couldn't believe the living bread, the living Word, Jesus, when He told them Himself three different times, boom, 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 right in a row. So we've got to be cautious that we, we put other things above the Word of God. We know God's Word is real. God's Word works. And then the third thing is don't get upset with circumstances and let them blind your eyes and, and blind your eyes to what the Scripture says. Blind your eyes to the fact that if Jesus said something, that He wants it to happen and it'll work if you'll believe Him and you're a believer and that's what you're called to be and you don't get swayed by the circumstances, no matter how dramatic they are. Listen. If you think about the resurrection, you have to back up to the cross. And you think about how brutal that cross was. Really, before he even got to the cross, Jesus was brutalized by the Romans. Stripes on his back. He was beaten. He was tortured. He was hung on that cross. He was, he was, he was in tremendous agony, not only physically, but, but because of us. And the disciples saw that. They knew that. And if you're not careful, circumstances will distract you. And I understand the brutality of that, but I also understand that Jesus told them over and over again, hey, this is going to happen, but I'm going to be raised from the dead. There's a resurrection. There's a resurrection. Now listen, I'm trying to bring this into to life today because here's what you've got to hear. Okay, This is... This is really important. You've got to hear this. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us, beginning in verse 19, Paul is praying a prayer here. Let me, let me just back up here just for a minute. In verse 17, Paul is praying a prayer, and, and he's praying that, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him would be on us, that the eyes of our understanding would be enlightened that we would know what is the hope of our calling and what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. That's what he was praying. But then he prayed something else. And that we might know, now listen to verse 19, what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe. That we, listen, that we might know what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which He worked in Christ, listen to me, when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Now listen to this. God's desire is to release that resurrection power in your life. Paul said, I want you to know what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us. I, I love the Amplified Bible. Uh, if I can get it here real quick, I'll read it to you. I love the Amplified Bible. Listen to what it says. So that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, the unlimited, and the surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe. Now listen to the next verse in the Amplified Bible, verse 20. Which He exerted in Christ when He raised Him from the dead 
and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. I, I, when, you get, when you get a revelation of this, it, listen to what it says in verse 19 again. This is powerful. It says, The greatness of his power in and for us, now here's a critical, who believe. In and for us, who believe. Okay? So if you're a believer, this power will work for you and it will work in you. And I love this. Listen. Listen to what the Amplified Bible says. As demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Do you know the resurrection was a demonstration? It was a demonstration not of, of what God could do if he wanted to, but what God wants to do for you, for me. He wants to exert the same power that raised Jesus from the dead for you. He wants to work in you. He wants to work for you. And he demonstrated it for us by raising Jesus from the dead. In other words, that resurrection, literally, I, 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 love, this, I love this phrase, that resurrection literally, now listen to this, released the, was released in our everyday life by that resurrection. Praise God, God's power is available for you to work in you and to work through you. Now listen to this, it's immeasurable. The minute you think you got God figured out and how far he can go, he just goes further. Go back to Lazarus, okay? Jesus is not in Bethany. Jesus is somewhere else, okay? They come and tell him, uh, Jesus, Lazarus is dead. Jesus said, okay, I'll be there in a few days. And he didn't even go right away. And by the time he got there, Lazarus was in the grave and, and his sister said, now, Lord, you know he stinks by now. You can't measure the power of God. You can't measure it. It's unlimited is, and, and it's immeasurable. So you can't say, well, I'm going to believe God, but, you know, it's too late. Or, well, God can't do that now. Or, well, things aren't going to work out now. Listen to me. God's resurrection power was demonstrated through Jesus being raised from the dead. So that you and I, as believers, can allow that power to work for us and in us who believe. We live in a different place. We live in resurrection power. We're not going to live in it in the future. Jesus made it available for everyday life. What do you need in your life? You need healing in your body? You need God to work a miracle. You need God to work uh, uh, circumstances out in your life. And you think, well, I don't know whether God could do that. Wait a minute. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Could he raise Jesus from the dead? Oh, yeah. Then he can work in your life. He can do what you need done in your life. Because his power toward you, listen to what it says, is immeasurable, unlimited, and I love this, surpasses greatness. I mean, it is, it is so great that even what we would call great, it goes past that. And that's what God has for you as a believer. So number one, don't get trapped into thinking only what God wants to do is in the future. Don't get trapped not understanding the Word of God or letting it be blinded to, toward you. Don't get trapped with that. And don't get trapped as a, as a doubter because your circumstances are not what they ought to be. You need to look at your circumstances and say, you know what? God's power is available to change this. Just like God's power was available to change Jesus from a bloodied, beat up, tormented person on a cross to a glorified Savior at the resurrection he can change my life. He can change my circumstances. He can change 
what I need in my life. I'm telling you, God wants to do that for you. God wants to work in your life. He wants to work supernaturally in your life. Because the hallmark, the the benchmark, whatever you want to call it, the benchmark is the power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. Now, I can tell you right now, you have not needed that much power in your life. I know you may think you have, but you haven't. But the good news is, listen, the good news is that that power is available to you. I'm going to show you some more. This will help you if you'll grab hold of it. It's, it's the power that was demonstrated in the working of His mighty strength, which He exerted in Christ when He raised Him from the dead. Man, I don't know about you, but that stirs my faith up. That Jesus literally was raised from the dead so that the resurrection could be real every day. Whatever it is in your life that you're struggling with. Maybe you're having mental problems and you're thinking, I just don't see any way out of this. The power of the resurrection, listen, can literally give you a sound mind. If you'll just believe God and let God work, you would be amazed at what He can do. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but to me, knowing that that power that raised Jesus from the dead, listen to me, knowing that that power literally is available to me as a believer gives me hope. It gives me expectation that whatever circumstances I'm in, whatever challenges I'm facing or you're facing today, there's power available. God's available to work in your life. It is is a, a living thing. It's God working supernaturally to work in your life. The resurrection is not just an event. It's a living thing. Let me show you this again in another scripture over in 1 Peter. <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 3. Listen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us according to a, now listen to this, a living hope. Here it is. You ready? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. I have a living hope, an expectation that God can work because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He gave me resurrection life now. Now listen to verse 4. Listen. To an inheritance, incorruptible, undefiled, and that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for me. Now listen to this who are kept by the power of God. What power is that? Same power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. Now that word salvation there means healing, deliverance, preservation. And it's not talking about just going to heaven. So now I'm kept by the power of God. How? Through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Man, i tell you what, we are living the life. We are living an expectant life. Not just on the end, we're living an expectant life of every day. We have a living hope. Jesus created this hope for us where we can actually live this life, this supernatural life, released every day for us. And I'm kept by that power. Listen, it's not something that's just kind of floating over your head and, you know, and things going to, everything bounces off of you because you're kept by the power of God. It's through faith. You've got to activate the power of God and you activate it by faith. Listen to this Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 will help you with this. Listen. I'm buried with him in baptism, in which, Paul said this, 
buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him, you ready? Through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. I am raised up with him. I was buried with him by, in water baptism. I was raised up together with him. And now I walk by faith in the operation of God. I, I live by God's operation. I live by what God's word says. I live by that, not by the circumstances, but by the word, by what God has said. And so when you get your mind set on that and you get focused on that, all of a sudden, challenges are not challenges anymore. Because you can say the power of God can handle that. How do you know Jesus raised from the dead? And this isn't even close to that. God's power is in operation. It's the operation of the power of God to keep me. Why? Because I've been buried with him in his death or baptism into death. Also, I've been raised with him. So when I believe in that resurrection power, then that power works in my life. Let me read you this out of the Passion Translation. I love it. For we've been buried with him into his death. Our baptism into death also means we were raised with him when he believed in God's resurrection, when we believe in God's resurrection power. Hey, I'm raised up already. I'm going to be forever with the Lord. Paul, Paul wrote this. He said, he said you know, I, 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 I would really rather go on to be with the Lord, but to be with you is more profitable. I don't know whether to go or whether to stay. Why? Listen, that resurrection power works all the time. And so Paul said, well, I'm going to stay because you need me. There's a resurrection power, listen to me, that's available for you, for your circumstances of life, for your situations of life. Jesus created a power through his resurrection that is available for you every day of your life. And listen, it's not on your own. It's not your own by yourself. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter 8. Verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. All right, stop right there a minute. Listen to what it says. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. The spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, dwells in you. And if that's the case, listen to this, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. I have a, I have a life flowing through me. I have an energy flowing through me. That's way beyond me. It's the Holy Spirit. Listen, it's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. No wonder the Bible says, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Man, I've got the resurrection power living in me by the Holy Spirit. He's there in me, through me, all the time. And listen to this. It says he gives life to my mortal body. Now, you can read that two different ways. There's going to come a time when the rapture comes and Jesus comes and the angels come with a shout and with the trumpet of God. And this body is going to come alive. The Holy Spirit on the inside of me is going to explode out of me and glorify this body and I'm going to rise up and be in the presence of God just like you. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. But the other side of that is, it says he'll give life to your mortal bodies right here on earth. That means that the Holy Spirit that's inside of you, listen to me, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will work in your body. You need healing in your body, he'll work in your body. 
You need strength in your body. He'll work in your body. You need strength in your mind. You need revelation. You need wisdom. He'll work in you. He's there to release God's power that was demonstrated by the resurrection. And he's the one who did it. And he lives in you. No wonder the Bible says that power toward us is immeasurable and unlimited and surpasses greatness. We've got the very Holy Spirit, the very power of God that raised Jesus from the dead living on the inside of us. So, so what, is, what does all that mean? Listen to me. This is my final point. Listen to this. Listen to what Paul said in Ephesians Chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Now listen to this. According to the power that works in us. What is that power that works in us? It's the Holy Spirit working in us. It's our faith grabbing hold of the power of God and letting it work in us. And the Bible says He'll do exceedingly abundantly all that we even think or ask. Let me read you this out of the Amplified Bible. Now to Him who in consequence of the actions of His power that is at work within us, you ready? Listen to this. Is able to carry out his purposes and do super abundantly, far over and above all. Now listen to this. All that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. That's the kind of power that's available for you right now. That's the kind of power that's at work for you right now. Where did it come from? It came from the resurrection. Because when Jesus was raised from the dead, the resurrection exploded into the earth. It lit, listen, it literally, if you hear this, it'll, it, it, it's just almost beyond your thought processes to, to realize this. If you'll listen to this, he gave us the power that raised the son from the dead so that we might live in his power and his strength in our lives on this earth. You say, well, pastor, I'm not having that in my life. You can. <clears throat> How do you do it? You do it by faith. You believe the word of God. You let God work. You let the Holy Spirit work in your life. And you'll start seeing. It won't come as an explosion. It'll just come one thing at a time. God will start working here. God will start working there. God will start working in your body. He'll start working in your mind. He'll start showing you what to do. He'll bring power to bear on your circumstances, to change your circumstances, to correct, to work, to, to move. If you need healing in your body, He'll work in your body. Whatever you need, because listen to me, it's our inheritance. It's our inheritance. We've, we've been given an inheritance from God, and it comes through that resurrection. Everything flows through the resurrection. It, 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 it's part of who we are and how we live and how we live our lives. So all you've got to do, listen, all you've got to do is grab hold of that and make up your mind that you're going to walk in that. And when you do, God can do supernatural things in your life. The Amplified Bible of, of Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. I'm going to throw this scripture out. Listen to what Paul said. I'm going to just read part of it. That I may know that same way that I might come to know the power outflowing from his resurrection. Outflowing from his resurrection, which it exerts over believers. The power flows out of the resurrection. And when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, it starts exerting its power over you as a believer. And so all we've got to do is make up our minds. 
we're going to live that resurrection life. I'm, I'm going to live his life, and I'm going to see him work. I'm going to see him move. I'm going to see God do great things. You'd be amazed at what will happen if you do. Let me pray for you right now. Father, during this Easter season, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that first of all, they put your celebration of the resurrection first in their lives. As we come together Friday night for communion, as we celebrate the resurrection on Sunday together, I pray that you exert your power over the believers and that that energy of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will rise up in them and flow out of them and bring what they need into their lives and touch others through them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Thanks for connecting with us today on the podcast. And you know, we'd love to connect with you in person at one of our campuses in Shreveport, Louisiana, or in Lake Charles, Louisiana. You can get all the information from our website, lifeunited.church.